Happy New Year and welcome to another edition of In the Cosmos from the De Anza College Planetarium. Hopefully everyone had a wonderful holiday season and for this first video of 2022, we'll be taking a look at what constellations and other sites you might be able to see in the evening skies for late January and early February. Before we get into that though, just a reminder to consider please subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell for a notification every time we post a new video. And you can follow us on social media and on our website. All of the links to those will be in the description below. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Here we are looking at the evening sky on February 1st, 2022. It's 8 p.m local standard time from here in Cupertino, California. And we're looking at the southern part of the sky here where we can see lots and lots of bright stars. And the reason why we're focused on the south is because it's a great time to be looking at a popular set of winter constellations. Perhaps most famous is a constellation which you may already be able to pick out on your screens. It's just a little bit to the left of center on your screens here and I'm circling it here and you probably know the name of it. If you know the name you can say it out loud that this is a constellation known as Orion the Hunter here. He's famous for his three belt stars here and he's got two stars for his shoulders and two stars for his feet or his legs down along this way. And as I said, lots of bright stars in this part of the sky at this time of year. And if I sort of center in on this group of stars, it's a great way to find other constellations with these bright stars. Now, if you start at the foot of Orion, which is a star called Rigel, you can make your way up over to a star called Aldebaran. That's in Taurus the Bull. You can keep going around to Capella, which is the brightest star in Auriga, the Charioteer. Keep going around to Castor and Pollux. Those are the twin stars of Gemini, the twins. Make your way down further to Procyon, which is in Canis Minor, the little dog. And finally over to Sirius, which is the brightest star in the whole sky, but also, of course, the brightest star in this constellation, which is Canis Major, the big dog. And those stars that I pointed out, Rigel, Aldebaran, Capella, Castor Pollux, Canis uh, Major with Procyon, and with Sirius, that is a group of stars that sometimes people call the um, winter hexagon or the winter circle because it's a nice bright hexagon or circle of stars that you can find in the evening sky here. And so that's something to look for when you're looking out on clear evening nights uh, this time of year. And as long as you're looking out there at the stars, if you've got a pair of binoculars handy, there's a couple of cool targets that you can be looking for. One is this group of stars right over here in Taurus the Bull. This is actually on the back of Taurus the Bull. It's a group of stars that you can see six or so stars with just your naked eye. That's a group of stars known as the Seven Sisters or the Pleiades. That's an open star cluster. And that's a great binocular target. Actually looks better in binoculars than in a telescope because it uh, covers a wide field of view here. So that's something you can look for. And not too far away, again, making our way back towards uh, back towards Orion and looking towards his belt, actually looking below his belt. If you look carefully, if you're someplace really dark, you might notice that it looks like there are three stars below Orion's belt. But if you have binoculars or a telescope, but binoculars will do for a start, now you can see that the middle of those stars actually isn't a star. There's actually something fuzzy there sort of a cloudiness there. And that's because this oh, middle star, as it appears here in Stellarium, is actually a nebula called the Orion Nebula. Let's take a telescopic view at these two objects here. We can see that the Orion Nebula, this is a picture taken by the Hubble Space Telescope here. It's a big cloud of gas. All that gas is slowly coming together to form brand new stars. And the youngest and hottest of those stars are uh, shrouded by the clouds here in the center. But those stars are maybe about 100 thousand years old, which sounds old to you and me, but for stars, they're practically newborns. So a nebula, like the Orion Nebula, is sometimes called a star nursery or stellar nursery because this is where brand new baby stars are born. Now, if you wait about a hundred million years, you'll get something like the Pleiades, which remember were, was not too far away from the Orion Nebula in the sky, right on the back of Taurus the Bull here. But this is an open cluster of stars. We see uh, six 
of these brightest stars just with our naked eye, but there are actually almost a thousand stars within this cluster. So there are a lot of stars in this cluster. These stars are 100 million years old as opposed to the 100,000 years old of the stars in the Orion Nebula. So these are sort of more like toddler stars that you can find in the sky. And it's sort of a cosmic, another cosmic coincidence that we have these two of the same type of object that can be seen not that far away from each other in the sky. And we think that again, 100 million years ago, that the Pleiades probably looked more like the Orion Nebula. And if we wait long enough, the Orion Nebula, instead of seeing this cloud of gas, will see a nice cluster of stars here. Well, that's it for this edition of In the Cosmos, and hopefully you enjoy that and learn a little something. Hopefully you do get a chance to get out and take a look at Orion in the real sky, as well as picking out the stars of the winter hexagon or winter circle there in the sky. The entire Planetarium staff, we are looking forward to some new and exciting events here in 2022. So do keep an eye on all of our social media and on our website to get the latest updates and the latest news. And until next time, this is the De Anza College Planetarium wishing you clear dark skies, a happy new year. And this is us signing off for now.